Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Andrew. Today we're celebrating the baptism of our Lord. Um, the only announcement I have is that we will be undecorating the church after service and after fellowship. So if anyone could stay and help, we'd certainly appreciate the, the help. Any other what? announcements in the congregation? I'll take care of it. Yeah. It's not for me. Okay. You know, I'm going to instead of better. <laughs> Again, good morning. Welcome. It is a joy to be together as God's people, whether here in our sanctuary, uh, in the parking lot, or on Zoom. If you are a visitor with us, a particular welcome. Thank you for joining us. We are in the season of Epiphany, uh, the season that began this past Friday. We did have uh, online worship, and 11 of us gathered to celebrate that. We rejoice in that. And uh, also thankful for our Sunday school class this morning. We had uh, seven children and six adults participating in that. So that was a joy. And you'll hear a little more about that during our uh, children's message. There's two notes about our worship today. One is that um, we are, Jessica is doing overall very well as our new secretary and administrative assistant, but there are a lot of changes that happen every week in our bulletin. So we do, uh, we are missing a couple here and there. One is the Sanctus or Holy, Holy, Holy during communion uh, is not what will be in the music, what is not what's in your bulletin, uh, but it's a very familiar one. So uh, sing along with Debbie when we get to that point. And our, our closing hymn is, uh, nor many of us would want to sing that in parts. If you do want to, that's uh, hymn LB90 um, in our green hymnal or LBW. Let's take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship.
Those who are able would please rise. On this Sunday, celebrating the baptism of our Lord, we celebrate our own baptisms as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us join together in prayer. O God, our Father, at the baptism of Jesus, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized into Christ faithful to their calling to be your daughters and sons, and empower us all with your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated.
The first reading today is from the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Here is my servant who I, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. The psalm today is Psalm 29 and will be spoken responsively. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a cow, and Mount Hermon like a cow. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness and the ash. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord of the Lord. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Children's message. There. Thank you. Thank you all for coming up today. It's great to see you all. So, so I was given a present this morning. See that? Right? Made me happy to get this. So I understand in Sunday school today, you all talked about baptism. Is that right? All right. And learn some more. In fact, I you even had a field trip to come in here and look at our baptismal font, right? That was pretty neat. And you also worked on painting some rocks, right? And put some messages on the rocks. So I understand that that right now they're still in the in the hall there and probably drying, but that in the coming weeks you will hide them all over the church and so our job we've got some homework now well some church work 
that need you all need to be looking for these rocks in the coming weeks and to see if you can find them and read the message that our Sunday school has for you all. So I mentioned earlier, we're in the season of epiphany. Epiphany, that's a really big word, isn't it? Epiphany. You know what an epiphany is? No, it's, it's a new understanding or a new learning, okay? It's something that makes us go, oh, I never knew that before. Or, wow, that's really cool. I'm glad I know that now, okay? And so in the church, we celebrate Epiphany as new things that we're finding out about God or God's call for us as children. And so you all, believe it or not, we're helping with this, with painting these rocks and giving these messages. So in the coming weeks, I trust that some of us will find this rock and go, God loves me. I got to remember that. Or God wants me to have joy in my life. I didn't think about that lately. Right? So you will be giving epiphanies or new understandings to all of us in this season of epiphany. So thank you for helping with that. That's wonderful. And thank you for coming up today. The second reading today is from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witness to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to, de to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of, sin, of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For those who are able, please rise. Let us together speak the Alleluia verse. Alleluia, a voice from heaven said, This is my son, the beloved with whom I'm well pleased. Hallelujah. A gospel reading for this Sunday of the baptism of our Lord is from the third chapter of Matthew. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father and from our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Of the day we have John the Baptist, part two. Five weeks ago, on the second Sunday in Advent, we had the first part of this gospel reading. That particular scripture spoke of John the Baptist's proclamation of the coming of the kingdom of God, with John calling on all people to repent and to seal that repentance with a baptism. A different kind of baptism from that which we practice today. John's baptism of that time was a sign of a human decision. It was an outward and visible sign to the people around you of your decision to change your life. It was a washing away of all that which made you unclean and purified you for a new beginning. That style of baptism had been practiced by the Jews for centuries. Our text today records Jesus Christ changing that ritual for all time. To help us put this into some kind of context, suppose, for example, that someone came along and told you that no, Christmas really wasn't the time to give presents or to decorate a tree or to be extra generous to those in need. Instead, from now on, December 25th would be a day to have fireworks and picnics and barbecues, even in the middle of winter. Or suppose that your worship team decided that from now on you couldn't sit where you wanted to, but would be seated as you arrived for worship, starting from the front of the sanctuary. That one woke you up, didn't it? What Jesus did with baptism in our reading today was at least as difficult for the people of that time to accept as either of the examples I just mentioned would be for us today. Traditions and sacred ways of doing things are very important for us. And there are often very good reasons for things being done a particular way. And here is Jesus changing everything about baptism. In fact, if you read between the lines in our lesson today, you can see some of the trouble it called, caused. Matthew records that when Jesus came to John to be baptized, John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? A very strong signal that a lot of people in Matthew's day had trouble with Jesus being baptized. Surely Jesus had no need to repent of any sin, so why would he need the washing away of sins? In truth, this passage, this act of Jesus has troubled solid Christians and scholars for centuries. Well, as Matthew records, Jesus does have a reason. It was necessary for Jesus to be baptized in order to fulfill all righteousness. Well, that certainly clears everything up, doesn't it? 
Thankfully, the next few verses fill out this explanation some. We are told that when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened. The Spirit of God descended like a dove and lighted on Jesus. And third, a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Now, the first thing we might notice about this event is that all three parts of our triune God are present in this unique occasion, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The fullness of God is present. We are told that the Holy Spirit descended from heaven and alighted on Jesus. This also signifies a couple things. First, that everything Christ will do from this point on, from his teachings and his healings to his being crucified on the cross, is done according to the will of God. Second, that what Jesus does is not simply by human authority or ability, but by God's power. And finally, we have the voice from heaven, the voice of the Father. And this, in turn, gives us three more clues. That Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is beloved by the Father, and that the Father is pleased with the Son's actions, both now and in what he will do. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all present in this particular moment of history, a moment centered around the baptism of Christ. There is something else going on here, too, which we should not overlook. Even before the Spirit of God descends from heaven, something else happens. The heavens are opened. This is not just a figure of speech. Through Christ's entry into the world, through the action of the Holy Spirit upon God's Son and upon you and I, through the will of the Father in heaven, the gates of heaven are opened. And you and I are invited in. Where before humanity had been cut off or distant from God, now by God's act, that barrier has been removed. And you and I are reunited with our Creator. All of this happened on the day that Jesus Christ was baptized. Quite a change from the traditional baptism that John and the Jews had been practicing. And it is this baptism which is recalled and reenacted in the baptisms we do and experience in our own baptism. Yes, we still retain the understanding that baptism is a washing away of sin, as John had it. But more than this, through our baptism, done once but recalled as many times as we may need, God joins us with the baptism of Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Through our baptism, we are claimed as God's own children, redeemed, through God's Son. The heavens are opened, and you and I are invited in. 
not by the pastor or the one doing the baptism, not by the actions or decision of the person receiving the baptism, but by God's power at work, as God has promised to do. When we gather around water and word, join together, God acts. In baptism, who we are is washed away, drowned, and we are born anew, filled with the Holy Spirit, and claimed by God forever as his own precious, beloved children. Amen. together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. <clears throat> God, our shepherd, let your spirit move with power throughout the church. Give discernment and wisdom to our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Take away our fear so that we serve and love, confident that you are guiding us. God, in your mercy. God, our source, awaken us to the beauty of the earth and the marvelous variety of life. Unite humankind in repairing and caring for your creation. Protect creatures and habitats in peril due to rising seas and warming temperatures. God, in your mercy. God, our vision, raise up leaders in every nation who dream of freedom and justice for all people. We pray for the work of international organizations that promote, promote peace and human rights, especially Amnesty International. God, in your mercy. God, our helper, come to the aid of all who cry out to you. Shelter migrants, refugees, and those fleeing war and famine. Bring relief to individuals and families experiencing hunger, homelessness, or impoverishment. Comfort any who are isolated or lonely. God, in your mercy. God, our Emmanuel, you are with us in our life together. We give you thanks for gathering us in worship and fellowship, and we remember those who cannot be present. Watch over those who travel, heal the sick, and speed their recovery. God, in your mercy. God, our hope, you bring life out of death and you promise to be our God forever. Shine upon the faithful who now rest in the fulfillment of your promise and bring us also into your blessed reign of peace. God, in your mercy. God of all nations, we lift before you the people of Ukraine. We ask your power at work for those whose lives are being torn apart, both those under assault and those being forced into violence beyond their nature. Guide the leaders of all nations that wisdom and compassion may reign. God, in your mercy. God of healing, we lift before you particular situations or people aloud, silently, or by chat. God, in your mercy. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your spirit, gather our prayers and join them with the prayers of all your church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. And share a sign of God's peace with one another. We continue with the offering.
Liberating God, you break the bonds of injustice and let the oppressed go free. Receive these offerings in thanksgiving for all your works of merciful power and shape us as people of your justice and freedom. You are met. You we magnify and adore through Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Again, just a reminder, when we get to the holy, 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 sing the familiar one that Debbie will be playing, not the notes that are there in your blood. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star, he was shown both forth to all nations. In the waters of the Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your Son, Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit come among us. Bless this meal with your word. Take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Amen. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and taste the joy of God.
Zoom, receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, broken and shed for you. Amen. Receive the body of Christ, broken for you. Receive the blood of Christ shed for you. Body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Of those who are able, please rise. And now the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Holy One, we thank you for the healing that springs forth abundantly from this table. Renew our strength to do justice, love kindness, and journey humbly with you. Amen. Just a reminder, if you would like to sing parts for our closing hymn, that may be found in the green hymnal, number 90, hymn 90 in the LBW. And now the God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold you today and always.
Go in peace. Follow the way of Jesus. Which is peace. Thank you.